But I don't know how to start this video, which isn't <laughs> ideal, is it? Because I've got no idea how you start a post-match reaction for beating your local rivals. Um, well, hello and welcome to the Villa View. No, you're not starting it. <laughs> We're in a pub, we're in the Wolf in Birmingham again, different backdrop to where we were last time, but we're in a pub, we're on the way to Wembley, and we haven't got any drinks. I'll change should, that should then. we get some drinks? Yeah, yeah. Alright, come on then. That's the fade. Cheers, mate. Villa on the way to Wembley. Absolutely. Absolute scenes. Yeah. Unbelievable. <laughs> Talk to me. <laughs> Talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> you just carry on, mate. Just carry on. I'll just stay for the drink. Okay, uh, I don't even know where to start. It was a terrible, terrible match by all accounts. Because, you know, when a football match descends into, like, teams trying just to win the match, it's never going to be pretty at all on both accounts. You're going to have a team that's got all the possession trying to score who can't score because you have a team that's just locking down trying to get the result. Yeah. Not pretty. Effective. Um, dragged it to penalties. <sighs> Nervous, man. It's the best way to win a game, penalties. It's the worst way to lose one. Jack said that after us, didn't he? He said yeah. if he could pick a way to win on Wembley, on, uh, on Wembley, on penalties is special. But I would have preferred a two or three nil comfortable win. It's never going to happen. No, you're never going to be comfortable in the playoffs. You know, if you're if you're comfortable in the playoffs, something's going too right. You're getting too comfortable. Well, hopefully we'll be uh, we'll be uh, comfortable in the final. Yeah. So I feel like I said after fan cams on or before fan cams that we can't get away with another bad performance, and that meant Tuesday as well. Yeah. We weren't great again, really. But at the end of the day. You just had to do whatever you could do to get through, and I feel like it's through no fault of our own that we were we were rubbish. Yeah. And the Albion weren't really that great either. It just involves into involve, goes into a stalemate, and penalties has to do, has to divide it in the end. But just because it's a football match with Villa and Dean Smith doesn't mean it's going to be good football. That it's going to be pretty. That Villa are going to win or even score. These things happen, and I mean, take it in isolation. Put it aside. It's a playoffs. These things happen. Teams lock down. Teams can't score. The pressure's on, the pressure's higher than it's ever been yeah. for both teams because Villa have got a chance here that they never thought they'd have. Yeah. They're going to Wembley now and Albion, I don't know, I really still can't put my finger on them. Well, yeah. They're going to have parachute money for a couple of seasons yet, yeah. so obviously they'd, have, they'd prefer to have gone up, but they've, they've got a bit more leeway than us, I feel like, that mm. we will lose a lot of players if we don't get promoted. And obviously, we're not there yet, I'm very skeptical of, if that's the word, I'm very sort of concerned of sitting here and getting too crazy yeah. about it because. We're not, we're not there yet, we're halfway, we're halfway through. But for the moment, all you can do is enjoy the game we've just seen Absolutely, and, and yeah. in, enjoy the moment. Yeah, it's point, pointless even. I mean, we're going to analyse some performance and stuff, but I, I wouldn't want to get too critical because you take it in isolation. That's not, it's not the league. It's, it's just a completely different animal, yeah. you know what I mean? And uh, what I will say about West Brom, though, is where were they all season? This, you know, this season's been for the taking. Those top two yeah. places have been for the taking, to be honest. Um, where were they all season? What, what did you think of their game plan yesterday? Because obviously they've, they've come to play a certain way yeah. in both games and to try and nullify us. And to be fair, it's effective. they've done a good job of it because we haven't played at our best in both games. It worked and there's a lot of criticism going their way, but they're, they're absolutely entitled to play football however yeah. they want. And if they thought that was their best way of getting to the final, fair play to them. And I, I remember saying to you in the preview, or, be, or at some point, that if, if we don't make it to Wembley and Albion have outplayed us, I'll sit here and hold my hands up and say fair play. They didn't, they, didn't out, they didn't try and outplay us, but they came with a game plan to stop us and it almost worked. They it were work, a couple yeah. of penalties away from getting to Wembley themselves, so as much as I don't like to sit here and praise them, I'm not going to praise them for it, they were affecting what they were trying to do and it almost worked for them, but they just miss out and happy days for us. <laughs> yeah, I no, really I'm, care. I'm buzzing. Um, you know, Albion came to shut things down and they did. They, in terms of the game plan, they won. They took it to the, they got their goal, taken to penalties. Yeah, yeah. Then in penalties, it completely changes. But I'd say, hand it to them. They got the goal in the first leg. It didn't turn out how they wanted. They got the player sent off. Come to the second leg, and they get you know, another they player sent off. <laughs> yeah, they got another man sent off. But they do what they do. And uh, in terms of the game plan, it, it worked. It worked to how they planned it. They got the goal they needed. They got it. They, they saw us out. Um, I will say Sam Johnson bailed him out at one point. Yeah. He had he had no business saving that to be to be blunt. People are Adoma, yeah, yeah, people are critical of Adoma, but he hit it hard, hit it low, and Sam Johnson had no business saving yeah, that. Anywhere but where he put it and it's a goal, <laughs> isn't it? It's one of those yeah. ones. Um, what did you think of the the way that they combated us? Because obviously like, I almost feel like they've they've messed up not getting to Wembley through their own fault. That Dwight Gower gets sent off in the first leg, which is a massive miss for the second. He was their most um, creative player, I guess, the, the biggest threat. Maybe he should have come off in the first leg to even before that even happens, you could argue. 
And then the second day, you got your captain, Chris Brunt, who's, I think he got promoted the first time, the proper, 10 years yeah. ago, whatever it was, yeah. so he's been there ages. Um, he goes in for the challenge with McGinn. Let's talk about that a little bit, because obviously, we, what, one? As True. One, two. Obviously, we want to talk about the game and, and, and Wembley mm. a little bit, but we don't want to use up too much content for a <laughs> Wembley preview. <laughs> so let's, let's, it still almost seems a bit pointless to analyse a game that, when I mean, we lost in 90 minutes, we ended mm. on penalties, it wasn't great, but let's just go rewind and have a look at it. So Brunt goes in on McGinn, fly, and the more times I've watched it, the more times I've just thought, it's a blatant stamp. Like at the time, I was a bit yeah. like, oh, it's a bit of a coming together, but like, McGinn is firmly on the floor before Brunt even takes the extra step. Like, what the Ming, people have compared yeah. it to the Mings one, I said, oh, how can you complain? He stamped on his face. The Mings one, they were both in motion, it's in the they went over and it went over. It's in the challenge. They, McGinn was already down, and then it was his next step over yeah. that, that was the stamp, so that, that didn't look great. Could have been sent off for that. Absolutely. And I think it was in the second half. Um, he goes in for a tackle, the one he was booked for, the first yellow. Yeah. On another day with another ref, that could have been a red if it was if it was a feisty game. I think so. If it was given, I wouldn't have sat there and gone, oh, that's harsh. It was a yellow, fair enough, like you move on. But in theory, I, I, I've seen things like that given. It, he was both, um, feet were off the floor, it was a little bit reckless. I think he got the ball, but it's one of those that if it was given, you wouldn't have said too much about it, I don't think. And then he gets then the third one. What even was the third one? I can't remember. It's a player trying to save the game for his team. What actually happened? I genuinely can't remember. Straight, go straight for the McGinn trying to get to the ball again. It's another rush charge, uh, yeah, exactly yeah, yeah. like the yeah. second one. But, you know, the more I've thought about it, he's not, that ch these challenges, they're, they're not crippling with John McGinn, even though that could, is a, a side effect of these challenges. It's a player that really does not want to lose this game. Uh, he's a captain of the team and he got sent off. He's, he paid his silly, price, head gone. Yeah. You've also got, so for the penalties, I mean, we're jumping ahead, we're jumping yeah, around a little bit, but. Go everywhere, it says. Fluid structure. You've got, yeah, <laughs> our, our five penalties. Horahan, I bet on him to score all day. Mm. Yeah, that's come on specifically for the penalties. He came on, just went straight back off. Quality. Yeah. Uh, Jack, I don't think he ever took a penalty okay, for so us, but. Jack's one, I want to speak about, because when that run up was a Chris Waddle one, that's, oh, he's going I, over I, the bar, when, you know. When he had his run up, I said, oh, I, I, I don't fancy this. Nine. But still, a, a great player, and one that you'd back to score. I thought McGinn might take one. Adoma's fourth, obviously he misses again, I he's, thought. He's, he's, a, he's entitled to, we have the space, let him do it. I thought he might miss that one. Dan said, because Dan was there, he managed to get a ticket and he like sprinted from the halfway line up to, to the penalty start instead of being calm and walking mm -hmm. out like everybody else. He like ran up, put it down, took it. it just all Athens. the signs were there for him to miss. Yeah. And the final one, obviously Tammy, you could argue, argue Codger should have been in that five as well, but that's a good, strong five, six players there. Albion's ones, I don't know the names because Holgate's at the first and it's Defender, centre back, a, 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 a Holgate, youngster yeah. I think as well. If you were if they were at full strength, Gale would have took one, Brunt would have took one, Rodriguez. Like, Rodriguez would have took one, he came off the pitch and Morrison in extra scored. time. Morrison and possibly uh, Robson Carner as well. Yeah. Just for argument's sake, he wasn't playing because he was suspended. Mm -hmm. He's a striker. He probably would have started because the Gale was out. He probably takes a penalty. So it's through their own downfall that they get they've managed to get to penalties, but all their best takers are off the pitch because they're either injured or suspended. That's the that's the problem you get that's into. That's small margins. You know, if, if you're launching into tackles and you know, I'm not going to sit here and criticise them because it's, it's competition. These players, the competitors, Dwight Gale, competitor, he gets sent off because of a, you know building up fouls because he's competing. He's trying to win the game. Same with Jay Rodriguez in the handball yeah. ages ago. You know, Chris yeah. Brunt, ignore the stamp. Let's not talk about the stand because I don't really want to think that well, it wasn't player given, meant it. wasn't even given it wasn't as a foul, given. so... Um, regardless, it's a red card, it should be off, you know. I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt primarily because I gave Mings the benefit of the doubt. And True. These things, you don't really want to question because it's, if, it's if it means it, it's horrible. You know, you don't want to think yeah. about that, but John McGinn got up, he weren't hurt. It wasn't like Oliveira. <laughs> True. <laughs> in bits. Um, but pff, stamps, they happen, don't they? They happen a lot, but we've seen them, so... Um, you know, these players are competitors and that's, that's the price of play. They won't be taking penalties if they get sent off. And you know, Rodriguez is a shame because he's led the line. He's carried that team, yeah. he's had to go off due to pure reason. It was crawling on the pitch at the end. You know, these players are exhausted and they've put, that, they've put it on the line for Albion. So fair play to them, but push come to shove. No one was there to step up when they needed in that penalty shootout. First go to Holgate, he's just... I don't know if Jed Steer's step put him off. 
I want I want to believe that. Like, I, I'm saying that's what happened. Yeah, you want to just make it the story because that's true. Yeah. You know, we can say it's true. I mean, just here after the game, they talked about how they'd been learning from penalties and even watching penalties from games that weren't involved with Villa and Albion just to see what other goalkeepers do and stuff. I like that we've got that. I mean, I'm sure every club does it, but I like that we've gone into that preparation and decided yeah. this is what we're going to do. This is how we're going to do it. Dean Smith mentioned in the post match as well that little touches like Jed Steele was the one that gave the ball to our uh, yeah, yeah. player for the, for, the, uh, Safety. for their penalty kick. Yeah. Just here's the ball, no messing about. You're not going to have their player trying to disrupt the flow of it. Here's the ball, good luck to you. Fresh and, and just try and keep it calm. I like little things like that, but ultimately you look at it and go, goalkeeper gives up gives ball to fellow player it means nothing but those little things that build up and the psychology aspect of it that they've missed the first one mm. and we come forward and we're calm he's just Great. saved it give him the ball you do your job you score and we're, it's advantage of it just those little touches and those small margins of what win football games and in theory can get you to the Premier League I look how professional Villa acted I mean say what you want about Judd Steer staring what was? Did that. he say anything? Love it. But I don't know. I think he, he was just staring. So when he first, when I first showed it on Sky, it looked like he was looking past him towards the bench. Yeah. I thought he was just getting instructions or whatever. Then he looks away, and then he's like, he's like staring at him all the way, and um, Holgate looks back at him, and they have a little moment. I was just like, well, we're in the mood for this. Like we're it's we're happy to wind people up. I like that. Professional. They're not. They're not shouting. They're not getting in anyone's faces. They're just doing stuff, and these little touches are staring. And passing the ball off. Going big on the goal line and stuff like that. Goalkeepers do all stuff like that all the time. I like that we're involved in stuff like that now that we're not looking at other teams going, oh, I wish our goalkeeper got in the face of the opposition because there's those little edges that matter and we yeah. seem to be taking notice of that, which is a nice comparison to last year when the tactics were pretty much roll your socks up and get on with it. Now it's <laughs> there's some proper thoughts and lot. ideas and yeah. planning and let's do this. Jack had a go at, oh, I keep calling him Jack, like his mate, really <laughs> had a go at a domo in, the, in the extra time because he played a pass that he put a ball in or something happened and he was having a go at him I, again I, I like stuff like that because I like better standards than what we're giving if, if Jack as captain thinks that that wasn't the, the ball to play he's got every right to go and tell him we're in a big game here we're behind <laughs> if we score one goal we're pretty much through get, enjoying that time of the game we need to do better than what you've just done I like that we're not scared to have a go at each other because the team uh, spirit and the togetherness looks great you need to have that side of it where they're willing to tell each other when they're not good enough and I feel like that's what we've got as well and the players will know individually people come on Twitter and YouTube comments and stuff say oh, this player didn't do well this player didn't do well they'll know that the players know when they've yeah. not performed the analyst teams they've got will know if they, they have to performed go through a the lot of, loads you know, of stuff they'll know it well, yeah. doesn't take fans to realise that a player didn't play well the players know that but it's nice that they can also recognise amongst themselves that we're not giving our all here I'm going to tell you about it and you're going to do better now yeah I think um you know the the fact that we seem to have a goalkeeping team and unit, and yeah. it's all, all these little units within the team, like the defensive unit, the midfield unit, the, the strikers and forwards, they're all getting together and just let the, the friendships and chemistry yeah. developing. And they're not afraid, to, you know, raise their voice. You may say Jack Grealish is the captain, and yeah, he is, but everyone across the team is voicing their opinions yeah. and making themselves heard. It's fantastic. I, lo I love it. What did you make of the atmosphere at the game? Because it was tremendous, to be honest. Yeah. I remember saying to you in the preview that in the second leg, I know it's advantage of them going home ground, yeah. but yeah, this ground's smaller, our away fans will still be good. And I expect, obviously, you expect them to, to their fans to be good anyway, but you think they're not going to be as good as what it was at Villa Park. But to be fair, I was only watching on TV and it doesn't always come across. But it looked decent, their fans were pretty good, I thought. They, they stepped up because, you know, it's one thing in the first leg, you know, the, the hike might not be there, the nerves are there. It's not, you know, as desperate as the they second. They had to be beyond the second leg's always no. desperate. The second leg is always going to be desperate because anything can happen. That scoreline is the final one. When that whistle's blown, that's when it ends. It's not the first leg. First leg's just the first half. Think of it this way. In the first 45 minutes of the game, in a stoppage time, no one's gunning for it. They're all calling off. Yeah. And when it's stoppage time in 90 minutes, everyone's going for it because they know that's when the game that's when the game can be changed. It's like the second leg. The fans are up there. Bit weird there's waving white flags. I wouldn't have done that. <laughs> that's a joke, yeah. You know, I know it's the Albion colours, so fair play, but just have the blue ones. Yeah, that's funny, yeah. I just have the blue it. ones, because it zooms in on this kid, poor kid, he's paid like <laughs> money to go to a game. He's, he's waving the white flag. <laughs> Um, so, you know, in isolation, it's I sure like media and analysis uh, work yeah. coming through there <laughs> that you're right. analysing the colour of a white flag when it, no one else does. It, it um, it, it's funny to look at, but no, they were, they were loud all yeah. game. Oh, they made a hostile game. atmosphere. Clearly had some effect, maybe not the full effect they wanted, but it had an effect. Oh, yeah, 100%. And again, I don't want this to be too heavy a praise of Albion because ultimately I, I'm a Villa fan, I want That's Villa to do well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Like I don't, I'm not, not going to lose any sleep over Albion not being no. in the playoff final at all. But 
They came to do a job over us on two legs. I feel like they did that as best they could, but we just about got through. In the first leg, we had that spell of 20 minutes where yeah. we, we did start to outplay them. Yeah. No, don't get me wrong, no, over two legs, I fully believe that Villa deserved to go through. I think yes. we were the better side over two legs. But they came with their game plan, however ugly you think that is, however anti-football you think it is, the wasting time, the long throws and the set pieces and stuff like that. But if that's what gets you to Wembley and the Premier League and 100 million, you have to do what you have to do. Absolutely. I've got nothing against that. And then again, their fans yesterday, they played their part as much as I'd expect any team to, as, as much as I expect any fan to get behind their team. And they made it difficult for us, but luckily for us, we got through it in the end. Because yeah. at one point, I thought we were going to be doing this video, I was talking about how we get to the final. We would have been doing this video, mate. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. I'd have been video. saying, forget the video. <laughs> I just had a feeling like it, it's, it's, it's looking right. that way. It's right. I mean, regardless of what happens to the final, we'll talk about that after the final. Oh we, we've got God. there, which is, you know, Horrible. that is that is such a big ch achievement in isolation. You Considering know. where we were a few months ago, and we keep yeah. talking, every video we do, we caught, we, like, I'm proud of that. When yeah. we won like three in a row, we were like, oh, I think where we were a few weeks ago, and we keep going, going on and going on. But you just, like, every step that comes forward, you're like, we're in the final. we got into the top six, that's great. Now we're in the final, that's great. <laughs> I think where we were like three months ago, like, everything just keeps getting better and better and better. And now yeah. I remember saying, like, oh, if we get there, I'll be disappointed, but it's a bonus to get there. Now we're here. Oh, oh I win. Wow. Like, I'll yeah. be very disappointed if we don't win. Yeah, I mean, there's a disappointment of. Don't care where we were before. We're, there, on, we're here now. But the fact, you know, when we look back on this season, we think 10 wins in a row to give us a chance of promotion. Because that's what we had to do. We had to we win had 10 to in a row. We did it. Like, <laughs> yeah. That's mental in itself. Yeah, and, uh, you know, look, if Backies beat us, we'd be having a different story. But they didn't yeah. win the final. Touche. But, my God, that when that <laughs> first goal went in, I knew. I, I thought it was over. But I knew Villa would. Fight. So I thought we'd score, I thought we'd score, I was like, oh, I, I, before the game I was seeing everyone was nervous and I was like, Albion always concede, we always score, we'll score, we'll be fine, we'll be going through, like, once the game kicked off I was like, geez, I'm yeah. a little bit nervous now, but I always backed us to score, we didn't, they kept a clean sheet in, in the 120 minutes. Well, the first goal, Villa were rocked, and it comes in off a throw-in, yes. all that chucks it in, Dawson heads it, no, no Villa player wants it, no one. That's just, it was very, we were very sloppy all over the game, I thought was the, the word I'd use to describe it, like, we'll come on to the short corners in a minute, but there's the short pass yeah. around the back and the goalkeeper. Yeah, no, but... And it's like, I understand why we're doing that, because obviously you want to draw their players in, get space and play out, but we gave the ball away a couple of times, and it was like, alright, let's stop doing that now, and they, then they did it again, Steer gave it away again for a third time, I think, and I was like, what are we doing here, like, are we trying to, are we trying to blow this, or... Like you've got at some point, like, like the commentators kept saying, like you've got Tammy Abraham up front, six foot five, whatever he is. He's got to be saying, play it long to me now. Just kick it. Which, I don't know why we didn't do that. Like I was sat there thinking, what? Why are we after giving it away two or three times, not changing the way we play? But the other part of me thinks that when Dean Smith came, everyone was saying Dean Smith will play his way no matter what. And you've got to respect him for that, that he sticks to his guns. But as a fan, you're watching it thinking, change what you're doing, because you're going to give away a stupid goal here. And I thought, well, we're doing this video, Jed Steer's going to give away a stupid pass to Rodriguez, and he's going to score the winner, and that's tie over. And in the Almost end, happened. Yeah, exactly, that's what I mean. Happening. And in the end, Jed, Jed Steer becomes the hero, and here we are talking about Wembley. Like, it's two totally opposite things. I thought we were going to do something stupid. Even on, like, 88th minute, I was like, right, get to extra time, we'll, we'll, we'll be all right with the, te the extra man. But what if we do something stupid in the last minute? Like, it's typical Villa to do that. Then at the end of the uh, extra time, I was like, right, just get to penalties, 50-50 then, whatever, like, it's the best we can do. I was thinking, what if we do something stupid again? Because we've just been on edge all night. Obviously, we got away with it in the end, but as a fan, it's just, that's when you start to get nervous before the game. It's like, oh yeah, we'll be fine. And you start giving the ball away in your own half and doing silly things, you sort of, th you sort of start to think, this isn't our night yet. Well, you go back to the first goal, really, because that's when, feel like when you're in your box, and there's a set piece coming in. That's your. It's even though they're in the the other team's in possession of the ball. That's your. That's your house. You can't let people treat you like that in there. They chuck it in. It's a header. No one wants it. And look, people have been going on about people on the posts. I get it. I was going on about it, and then I was thinking the reason people aren't on the posts is to stop the shot happening in the first place. Yeah. You know, you prevent the goal by having someone on the post, but the shot shouldn't be happening. No one wants the ball. It's just no clumsy, one wants the ball. It? It's just slow. It's too passive. If you're pe putting people on the post, you're taking people out who should be attacking the ball. Yeah. And they didn't attack the ball. Tammy Abraham attacked the ball, and he kind of was too much. Didn't really do anything. He does that, and Almo thinks 
it's covered and it's not yeah. and you know there's a lot of fault there you fault people for not attacking Dawson you fault people for not tracking the ball you, f you fault even Jed Steer for not yeah. don't you, that is his yeah. that's his box that's his box and he should be defending it but you know he, he put it aside now the thing is you see from yeah. two legs of playing against them playing against them in the league as well that's what they're going to play for that is their game to get set pieces throw-ins corners all that Bombard you in the box, get yeah. the aerial presence, and that's what they're going to do. So you go there, and that's what you can see from. It's just basic; it shouldn't be happening. Worst thing how about, do you stop it? The worst thing about that goal is that it just bounces in. Yeah, it's it was so, so much so time. So and slow. It's, it was like slow motion, wasn't it? The way yeah, it went and no one. You know, the more you watch it, the worse it is. It's a, it's a, you know, it's almost a primary school goal to concede. They chuck it in, bounce off a bloke's head, and not, not one of the players wants it. None of the defenders, not the goalkeeper, no one in the box wants it. Um, my biggest question about that is not people on the post or Villa were too passive basically they should have been attacking that Couldn't, shouldn't be letting Albion do that in the box my biggest question is why not Villa doing that yeah, yeah. why aren't you teaching or learning how to do that because that's an asset part of me feels like I wouldn't want to rely on that style of play but it's a nice it's weapon not, to have in your locker to have a long just because Tony Pulis like started doing yeah. it it doesn't mean it's negative it's a corner from someone's hands there's nothing wrong with that. I feel a little bit weird <laughs> criticising Villa after we've got to win. Well, you have because, to there. Because, yeah, true. It's almost like having a go at Tammy Abraham when he scored 20 odd goals or having a go at Jack Greer for doing something when he's our best player. Like, we've got to Wembley, so to sit here and moan about it no, yeah. seems well, stupid, but I mean, there's not really much to, to praise Villa for because we didn't do anything for <laughs> two hours. Well, yeah, again, you know. An hour and a half. There's a number of players who could have prevented that goal. Villa conceded far too early from something so simple. It was, yeah. you're marking the zones, so why is no one attacking the zones? Forget the post, man. Take the shot, take the player. You know, yeah. you have to defend actual box. The, you know, either the keeper comes out, rushes it, clears everyone. Because he's got complete control of that box. He can do what he wants. So talk to me about these short corners, and there's been a lot of chat about it on Twitter that you play it short and nothing comes of it, but then you've been playing it long into the board, nothing into the box all game from crosses, and nothing's come from that either. So. How do you win against that? And nothing seemed to work yesterday. And it was like that. I was passing around the back short. It's like change what you're doing. It's clearly not working. <laughs> we kept doing it, and that's obviously for a reason. Uh, I'm not yeah. a football manager. <laughs> no corners. Corners are one of the most weirdly hard things about football. Corners. You score. I think it's three percent of corners are scored. Which, wow. Why are they? Why are we roaring for corners when you know? As you remember the corners you score, I and mean, when you score from a corner, it's fantastic. But most of them are going absolutely yeah. nowhere because a corner is a hard thing to take. When you're taking a long corner, when they used to happen, you were putting it over, high and over, so it's, it's going in low, which is anyone's anyone's ball. The rules were different; anyone could attack it. You could take yeah. the keeper out. You kick it high and in. Or if unless you slip, you've taken a good corner. Nowadays, you're asking it to be whipped in with a lot of pace and a lot of spin. And not only really that, you have to get over the first man defending. Yeah. He has to get. He has to be high enough to get over him, wide enough to escape the keeper's reach, and it has to dip after after the first man. So it's got to go down really quickly. So if you think about it, these people taking corners are doing a fairly decent job anyway of taking them yeah. because we've seen they were seeing it happen. We've seen them get in. It's an easy thing to criticise. Yeah. If it goes long and overpasses everyone, you just go, oh, what a waste. So if you go short yeah. and nothing comes of it, you go, what a waste. It's, like you say, it's, you've got to be pretty much perfect to score from it. And like there was, a, there was an instance in like, the last couple of minutes where we got a corner, I think Horahan took it and it hit the first man. And just think that was the chance to score and take it away from going to penalties. But obviously, if football was that easy that you'd score from every corner, no. it'd be a, a, very, a very different game, wouldn't it? Well, you're probably really vulnerable from corners as well. Yeah. Because West Brom Especially against something like West Brom. Yeah, well. West Brom, tall, athletic team. Um, they're winning the ball lot in there. If you're kicking it into the air and you're not winning it, because look at Villa's, the goal Villa conceded, no one wanted it. What's yeah. to say they want the corner? What's to say that West Brom aren't going to beat him for the corner and launch a counter attack? Maybe Villa are more vulnerable playing a long corner in and playing it short. Yeah, so Maybe if they clear and break, that's game over, isn't it? Done. You're absolutely done. And for what, a 3% chance of a goal? Yeah. You would, you is that legit ask that from? Opta. Okay. Opta is that legit? That's legit. Okay. You can look, look at that. <laughs> I don't know if it's recent, 
but it's recent enough for me to put a lot so of faith in. What did you make of the lineup? Let's just go through that quickly. I don't want to dwell on it too much. Obviously, Horhan yeah. and Green could be in the change that most people would have been fairly happy with. No Chester. No Chester. <laughs> no Twins David <laughs> right back. I mean, what, what a disgrace. You know, um, what's the point of not being able to have fun? That was funny. You know, I like that. Got pouters for it, but like, I said it because I want to have fun. The thing is, that doesn't come across in the video though, that it was said for almost like a, a bit of a joke. People, yeah, people, people going, look at it and go, what, an idiot what a terrible want. tactical decision. James, you are Steve Bruce. I'm thinking, hang on a minute. I could just, you know what, Dan, the line up for the final is going to be the same. Let's not discuss it. Move on to the next point? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's a good point. Okay. It's a bit of a. To be fair, Twan's A at right back, but not Chester at centre back. I may would have found You know what? If, if Jose Mourinho's centre back, maybe I'd have. If Jose Mourinho's wrong and Southgate's wrong and AD Bufu is wrong for putting Twan's A at right back, I'd be wrong in that camp. <laughs> then it's like Barry from Perry yeah. Bar. Okay, Baz, calm down. Log off. Um, but about the team, though, that was the team everyone wanted but it wasn't able to deliver that in the way that we thought. So, was it one, was it the right team? If it wasn't, what should it have been? If it was the right team, why wasn't it good enough to, to win in 90 minutes against Albion? Got no real answer for that, to be honest. I think, Cheers, <laughs> I think look, Villa, regardless of how you line up, you're not entitled to go to a stadium, whether it be Villa Park and Hawthorne, and just win a game based on your lineup, just how you present yourself. You know, you're not entitled just because you've got the best player at centre back, the best player at right back, left back, wherever. Not entitled to just go and win the game. I think Villa set up in the strongest possible formation. I think Hurrahan probably was one of the better players all game. Yeah, I agree. Um, I think he was the best of the midfield three. It wasn't great the entire game for anyone. Well, by Jed Steele. Yeah. Fantastic. And yet, and come on, dispatch a play. Oh, what a like, hero. Love that. He, oh, he's staring, doing, oh, he's doing planes. His celebration was just like staring at the ground. Yeah, like, what a hero. Was like, gee. I saw Dan's tweet actually as well that like, he comes on, that's his first touch, which in itself is, is a nice thing, but he's brought on for that job and he's done it. That could potentially be his last, last, last kick. You know what it reminded me of? And this is very on the nose for you. Kratos from God of War. That's what Dan <laughs> yeah. said earlier on the phone. Yeah, he's like, he reminds me of that the all the time. Nose. Same beard, same big build. Yeah, yeah. Like Danny said exactly he's the same. Literally, yeah. Kratos from God of There's War. There's a lot of people watching this that won't have a clue who that is, but yeah, I'll put a picture up. You play, play that game. What about John McGinn? Because we player of the season, fan favourite, everyone loves him. I love him. He's a, he's a quality player. Could easily play in the Premier League, I think. Over the last two games, I barely even remember he's playing. He's been totally ineffective. And is that because Albion have done a job on him and stopped him from playing, or is he just having a, an off day and it's not the John McGinn that we're used to? He has to do everything all the time. You know, it's almost, it's almost similar. I don't want to compare the players, but any criticisms of Paul Pogba. Paul Pogba at Manchester United because people are going he's had a bad season he has to do everything at all times and he almost does it and that for me is similar to John McGinn he has to do a lot and he almost almost comes off of it sometimes, it, sometimes it, it's not good sometimes it isn't good but I'll take it I'll take a John McGinn on a bad day over anyone else to be honest the thing is like, again going back to the entire team performance I'm hoping that we've got our bad performances out of the way now we can't yeah. afford to play the way we have in the last few weeks against Leeds or Derby in the final. And we need 10 out of 10 performances from McGinn, Grealish, Tammy. Everyone really, the centre backs, goalkeeper, like everyone needs to be at the top of their game to get through this because obviously we've been here last year and this is version into preview territory for the final. How do you think that experience of losing last year will affect this squad, if at all? I think it's better than winning. I think it's better than any experience well, yeah, we of winning. Yeah, we won it this year. <laughs> we won it last year. Um, it's better than any experience of winning. You know, a lot was made that Snodgrass had been there before, and Almo, I think, had been there before. Yeah. It didn't matter, did it? It didn't matter. Like, and one, they knew the pressure that come and playing at Wembley. There's one player on this pitch who's been there loads, and it's Jack Grealish, and he has tasted success and he's tasted failure yeah. at both levels. And now the failure stays will stay with him more this season because he's the captain. He, yeah. he has to take the hit for the team. You know, he's he's the face of the team. He's got the armband. He's the person delivering the instructions, telling people to, to step up. So I think this is this final, Jack Grealish's final, more than ever. I think that the players that played last year will know what it was, what it meant to the club and the fans, and will realise or do their do their best to go. I don't want to have that feeling again because I imagine a lot of them will have felt. I mean, they're not fans of the club apart from Jack, but they'll well, have felt how bad it would have been to have lost that final. And they will we'll do everything they can to not have that happen again. Fulham were good last year, but I 
potentially argue that Leeds are a better overall team than Fulham were. So if it's Leeds yeah. in the final, it's, it's not going to be easy. I said that if it's Derby as well, although I'd fancy them over Leeds, that won't be easy either. You we can't still just need say to be one Yeah, I mean, a lot of people go, I prefer Derby over 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 Leeds. But Out of the two, I'd yeah. obviously prefer Derby, but even so, that's not a given. We've beaten them twice this season comfortably. Well, we beat them three times out of three. Like it's one of those things it's set up that they're going to get revenge against us on the final day. Like, I don't know. It's just oh, it's a long again, we're going far away, a bit further away from the game, but. Having been there last year, back to back, I did a little stat actually. I looked through teams that have been to Wembley twice in a row. Uh, only one team has been, there's only one occasion where a team has been to Wembley twice for the playoff final and lost both. So that was Leicester in like the 90s. Oh, I was hoping you say Leicester in the 2000s, so they went on to win the Premier League. Uh, yeah, I think, it was, like, take it, yeah. I think <laughs> it was like 93, 94, something like that, but then they won in 95 or yeah. something like that. So they got to it three in a row. And I think there was West Ham that lost and then got, again, got there again and won and somebody else got there and lost and then won the following year so yeah. it's happened more often that the second time they got there and won so hopefully we're in that <laughs> camp as well but um, um, you know you look at the players who lost last season and you, you know you've got Grealish McGinn, not McGinn sorry Grealish Whelan Horahan yeah. players that Elmo. really want yeah an Elmo and you know even BP got Bjarnason Bjarnason very publicly and I know he's probably not going to be in the team of the first, you know the, the substitutes bench yeah. but he was a player last season he publicly on record saying he was raging that he wasn't part on the pitch and wanted yeah. to fight for Villa to drag him through you've got a lot of mentality now and so much frustration has come out from last season so much disappointment so much anger and so much you know just fury not at the other team and the refereeing decisions as bad as they were because it's just fury at themselves and you know Jack Grealish a lot was made of that dribble across the pitch where he's just done everyone he doesn't score it so it doesn't matter and he knows that on his best day he wasn't good enough so his new, his new best day has to be even be better oh, I'm very like, I was never really nervous about the semi-finals but I'm um, already thinking about the final thinking not nervous for the actual game but the feeling of, of losing the implications of what that means for for the club and another year in the championship like I don't know if I could face another year of going to Wembley and losing not losing two in a row it's just heartbreak I might just have to stop stop to watch the yeah, just, yeah, just <laughs> go so, yeah. hide in my room for a year <laughs> so we'll end with one point I wanted to talk about which is Dean Smith um, and also Emilia Jelinek there were some clips on social media I don't know whether you saw the dressing room after yeah, the, boy, the boys singing Sweet Caroline which I've had in my head all day uh, walking the dogs singing <laughs> it on my own like an absolute loser but there's some videos and obviously a lot of players are going mental loving it enjoying the moment yeah. fair play to them love it great scenes and it pans around and he's got Emilia Jelinek on his phone just like that just like staring at the floor and somebody gets up to him and he's like oh give us a dance and he's just like no and I was just like one, that's his personality all over, like he's proper, proper cool and calm. Also, he'll probably be thinking, we haven't won anything, that's, yeah. that's just no, calm down yeah. a bit. And then also you've got Dean Smith at the end of the game, goes over, clapping the crowd, giving it thumbs up and everything, and he goes, yeah. one more, yeah. one more. I love that. I don't know why I put a tweet out earlier, it's something about it just gave me, gave me chills that he gets it, we're not going mental, we're not over celebrating it, we're not lording up this victory like somebody said that Steve Bruce in a press conference where we were going, oh the lads are great today, got to Wembley, told you we'd all get here, that sort of arrogance. He's sort of going there like, yeah, appreciate the moment, we've got there, we've done the job, no one thought it was possible, but it's still one more yet, still yeah. one more big game and if that game is, uh, if, we, if we don't form in that game and we lose, you can forget this 10 game winning run and get into Wembley because it doesn't matter as yeah, much as it's good it yeah. doesn't matter Can't this next game this next game is massive and you've yeah. got to be on your game to do it and absolutely I don't expect the lads to get carried away I think they've got a few days off now but after that they'll come back fully focused all the media and the interviews and stuff they do will be big enough how great the fans are how much of a great opportunity is to get to Wembley but ultimately, you've got to go there and win. And I feel like we're fully focused yeah. to do the, the best that we can to do that. Thank you very much to The Wolf in Boeing for having us. Filming at a very different time to what we were last year. So there's music, there's people everywhere. Uh, so apologies if the sound hasn't been great. But I don't care, to be honest, what we're trying to do. Um, thank you very much for watching. Uh, there's some possible Wembley content coming up. I don't know what we're doing yet, but I've got a few ideas of what we can do, so just whether we can pull it off if we can, there'll be some good stuff that we can do. Um, there's a podcast being recorded tonight as we're recording this, which will possibly be out after this. There'll be a preview for Wembley, play our final at some point. I don't know when we're doing that. Possibly fan cams at Wembley. We did think about doing that last year, but we didn't win, so we 
bottled it basically so we, we might do that again <laughs> but hopefully we win and we get to do some kind of stuff at Wembley um, and there'll be some kind of promotional hype video for Wembley that I'm working on as well which is going to be pretty good copy all this show. <laughs> uh, I've got ways around it mate I've got, ways, I've got a creative ways to get around the YouTube copyright system but yeah there'll be some, plenty of stuff to keep, keep up to date with there'll be another podcast next week at some point before the playoff final and there'll be one after the playoff final as well so plenty of stuff to do plenty of stuff to watch thank you very much for watching this video or uh, listening on iTunes Spotify all the usual places uh, leave a like on the video subscribe to the YouTube channel the Villa View thanks James for joining me great video really appreciate it and up the villa if you enjoyed that video why not watch another click the video choices on screen now to go and watch them in full be sure to subscribe to the channel by clicking our logo there on the left easy please